and gentlemen, on behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Nathan Rush, United States Marine Corps retired, and Major Nicholas Perkins, welcome to today's retirement ceremony, during which Major Perkins will be released from active duty and retired after 20 years of faithful and honorable service to his country and the United States Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation offered by Major Perkins' stepdaughter, Miss Ashley Miller. Eternal Father, you are with us through all our days, even in times of change. It is with thankful hearts that we lift our prayer to you on this significant occasion. I pray today for this dedicated Marine and faithful, and faithful man as he retires. We are grateful for the decades of sacrificial service which he offered on our behalf. We thank you for the life, skill, and dedication of your friend, my Marine guy. We also thank you for the great sacrifice of his wife and children in allowing him to serve faithfully and with rigor. You're welcome. Please continue to guide him through this new journey. Stay with him and bless him in every new endeavor. Oh, and P.S. Try to help his wife find patience, peace, and tranquility during this challenging time. After all, her husband will probably be spending more time at home. You should also provide Nick with protection too because there's no way the Marines properly prepare him for the force that is my mother. As a personal prayer for you, I turn to my Irish heritage. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you all in the palm of his hand. Amen. Now taking his position is the retiring officer, Lieutenant Colonel Rush. Officer to be decorated and retired, Center March. Attention to orders. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Meritorious Service Medal to Major Nicholas B. Perkins, United States Marine Corps, for ser service as set forth in the following. For outstanding meritorious service as Branch Head, Active Security Branch, Ground Combat Element Division, Force Protection, Capabilities Development Directorate, Combat Development and Integration, Headquarters of Marine Corps from October 2021 to April 2024. At a pitiful moment in the history of our Marine Corps, Major Perkins leveraged his infectious leadership tactical acumen in expeditionary operations to drive requirements analysis and capability development for active security programs. To address gaps in ground and maritime tactical early warning, Major Perkins was the visionary behind the development of ground-based, multi-spectral, sensor-oriented systems to enhance battle space awareness, tighten decision cycles, and protect the force by denying the enemy undetected approach. Additionally, Major Perkins led planning and enterprise-level collaboration for the Marine Corps Irregular Warfare Portfolio, Identity and Attribution Activities Programs, and Marine Corps Intermediate Force Capabilities. His keen understanding of the force development process and force design related lines of effort, coupled with his ability to effectively communicate with and engage key leaders as to operational and budgetary requirements, contributed immensely to the effective development and sustainment of priority efforts. Major Perkins' superior performance of his duties culminated in his 20 years of honorable and dedicated military service. By his professionalism, vision, and loyal dedication to duty, Major Perkins reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and United States Naval Service. For the President, Eric M. Smith, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The official retirement orders from the Commandant of the Marine Corps to Major Nicholas B. Perkins. Certificate of Retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America. To all who shall see these presents greetings, this is to certify that Major Nicholas B. Perkins, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Marine Corps on the first day of June, 2024, D. M. Berger, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps.
a letter from the Commander-in-Chief, Certificate of Appreciation for Service in the Armed Forces of the United States of America, Major Nicholas B. Perkins, United States Marine Corps. I extend my personal gratitude and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation to you for your patriotic service to our country. Your bravery and dedication in our armed forces helped protect your fellow Americans during a critical moment in our history and contributed to a world of greater security and growing prosperity. Your devotion to duty, honor, and country, in keeping with the long traditions of the finest military in the world, embody the American ideal of selfless service. Our nation owes you an incredible debt. Your commitment and the example you set will inspire future generations to serve with pride and to keep our country secure. You represent the best of our nation, and I join our fellow Americans in saluting your honorable service. I wish you happiness and success in your next chapter. J.R. Biden, Commander-in-Chief. A letter from the Commandant of the Marine Corps. Dear Major Perkins, on the occasion of your retirement, I extend my sincere appreciation for your dedicated service to the Corps. During your career, the Marine Corps has been involved in combat, and it has been because of Marines like you that the Corps has acquitted itself so well on the battlefield. High standards of excellence in conduct and performance have long been our hallmark, and with them, a unique spirit that sets us apart. You can be proud to have been part of that legacy and to have attained your grade in an organization such as ours. In recognizing your long and dedicated service to the Corps, we cannot fail to acknowledge the contribution of your family over those many years. Long and frequent separations are a way of life for Marines, and it takes a very special kind of family to share the many hardships with us. We owe them our deepest gratitude. As you leave our active ranks, go with the knowledge that your distinguished service will have lasting influence, and it has earned you a legion of friends and fellow Marines who wish you well in the coming years. The Corps is better because you served, and our nation can stand proud because it produces Marines like you. I speak for all Marines in wishing you good health and good fortune. Semper Fi Marine, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Mrs. Tanya Dunn has been presented a certificate of appreciation for her steadfast support to her husband and his Marines throughout his career. United States Marine Corps, certificate of appreciation presented to Tanya L. Dunn. On the occasion of the retirement of your husband from active duty, you have earned the Corps' grateful appreciation for your unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible your husband's lasting contributions to a grateful nation. Given under my hand this first day of June 2024, Lieutenant General Carson S. Heffo, Deputy Commandant, Combat Development and Integration. Flowers are being presented to Major Perkins' wife for her, un for her dedicated support to his career. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the retiring officer, Lieutenant Colonel Rush. Wow, a lot of people here. This is good. From what I understand, we have uh, family, friends from all across the country which is good. Um, Marines from your first platoon are here. That's uh, quite, quite a big deal. Most importantly, though, we have government civilians here on a Saturday. <laughs> so think about that. Uh, they're not getting paid. If this was a Friday, let's say 10 o'clock, they'd all be here, the place would be full because they'd get off early. Uh, so for them to show up on a Saturday for you, that's actually really good. Uh, 
Um, when Nick asked me to do this, it was a very hot day in January. It was like maybe the 26th or something. I can't remember. It was like 75 degrees. Friday, 3.30. I was already outside, shirt off, with a beer in hand. It was nice. He calls. He's on his skill bridge. Um, this is a fellowship with Booz out in Hamilton. Spoiler alert, he got the job. Uh, he starts on Monday. And it's a big deal. calls and he, you know, there's small talk about the office. Um, he'd been out for about two weeks. It was big. A lot of stuff going on at work with one of the programs that he was working. He kind of talks about that, but I can tell there's something else that he wants. Uh, I ask him about the skill bridge. Things are going well. And then he pops the question. He's like, hey, will you be my retiring officer? Uh, I thought you already had somebody. Well, he couldn't do it. Okay, so how far down the list did you have to go? <laughs> he said, pretty far down. <laughs> so, whatever that means, I'm here. Glad I could do it for you. Um, but, another point, did anyone notice that we had two commandants? Two commandants signed those letters. Okay, the former commandant, Berger, the current commandant, General Smith. That's how important this guy is. Two commandants. I wanted to wish him congratulations on a career. Well done. All joking aside, um, when Nick came into the Corps, of course he had picked up his nomination for the Naval Academy. By the way, not just one nomination. I figured this out when I was talking to him. He had two nominations. You know how hard it is to get one nomination? He had two. His senator and representative. Um, so, I think you said you went with the senator. More likely you'd get in an appointment with that, so that was a good call. So, uh, pretty good, obviously, at marketing himself. Um, so, just think about the time he was at the academy, though. He goes in at 2000, September 11, happens. So, he's chomping at the bit for almost three years to get into action. Uh, he's commissioned in May of 2004, goes to the basic school right here in Quantico, goes to the infantry officer course. I assume that you put grunt as your number one and wanted to be a grunt, or did you want to be something else? And then supply officer? Ground supply. Logo, supply officer. Logo, which is what I was. Supply, grunt, and then they forced you to be a grunt. Well, that makes sense. Uh, anyway, so uh, graduates IOC, and he goes in. June of 2005, uh, to first Battalion, third Marines. Uh, by the way, he's he's getting to a battalion that five months earlier had just lost basically an entire platoon of Marines in a, in a helicopter crash. So that's a that's a reality check. Okay, you've been in the academy, you've been in school, you're wanting to get into the fight. He's going to a company, Charlie Company, that just lost. 26 Marines and one sailor in a helicopter crash. So, January of 2006, deploys to Afghanistan. We've been in that fight since shortly after September 11th. He's part of the 10th Mountain, 10th Mountain Division Task Force Operation Mountain Lion that pushes in uh, to the Korgal Valley, which later became known as the Valley of Death by U.S. service members. So they were making that push in to the eastern part of Afghanistan where you had insurgents, Al-Qaeda, Taliban. So that was that was a hard, definitely a hard fought experience uh, for a second lieutenant to, uh, I mean, that's your first first action really with, with your with the team. Comes back, they're not back very long. Uh, they end up uh, deploying to Iraq, which a lot of us here uh, who serve probably did. Um, and they're going into uh, the northern part of Iraq, again, where you have insurgents and Al-Qaeda. So he spent six months in Iraq, comes back from there, picks up the company, um, which is a big deal, right? So he's a first lieutenant, and they made him a company commander. Um, that means that you're kind of the tip of the spear. That's your leadership saw in him uh, something big. Uh, the Marine Corps did as well, because they sent him back here to IOC, first to the basic school, 
and then follow on to IOC. And for the instructors at the basic school and infantry officer course, they don't send the dum-dums there, okay? They, they want the smart guys, the guys who have some experience, some operational experience. His two tours, combat tours already, proved that he was the right person uh, for that, that job. Once he uh, leaves uh, IOC two years there, uh, we go to school. All right, so that the resident school is much better than doing the non-resident piece. You get to hang out with your friends and uh, build some relationships there. So that was a good break until he goes, uh, he's already on the East Coast. So were they gonna send him back to the West Coast? No, they sent him to Camp Lejeune, uh, which was a smart uh, TMO move and it cost uh, a little bit less for the government to just push him down the street not too far. Uh, so he goes to 2nd Battalion, 6th Marines, picks up a company, golf company, which is a line company. Uh, prior to going UDP, which is what most of the East Coast battalions were doing during that time, unit deployment program to Okinawa. Uh, so he did that, uh, but he did that as a weapons company commander. And I was in an infantry battalion, again, as a logging, but I understand, I mean, they, they put the best and brightest uh, is, your, is your weapons company commander. That's who they want. Um, so Nick picked that up, deploys, comes back, and I'm pretty sure you thought you'd be out of the, uh, the Iraq business, but they send him over to Iraq again. So he gets a third combat tour in, into Iraq. Um, comes back from there, that's when you go on I and I duty. Uh, I know that you have several uh, friends from, from that tour here, uh, from the Houston area. So that was good, you kind of got to go back home. Uh, to your old neck of the woods, your old stomping grounds. Uh, did that for three years, and then they push you out to 7th Marines, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines. Um, goes in there as the executive officer. Also spends a little bit of time as the officer. Officer. Uh, officer, forward uh, future officer. So, a career well done. Um, then, he's, then he gets tasked to go on a combined joint task force uh, inherent reserve. Yep, so that's when he comes to us. So that was a career, uh, eight, eight, 18 years of career basically in that short amount of time. And then he comes here to the worst place you could possibly come, uh, Capabilities Development Directorate, which is where uh, a few of us work. It's horrible. Uh, <coughs> you say combat's bad, it worked out. Uh, <laughs> But we get him, and when he comes here, he replaces two individuals. We had a uh, Lieutenant Colonel branch head. Nick rolls in as the branch head, and then we had another major who was a capabilities integration officer uh, for the, the primary program that Nick was, uh, was in charge of. Uh, I won't get into names, uh, but we had a former boss. He's not here. I think he'll be at Patty's later. But of one of the individuals, he would often say, he was like an eight-year-old. Uh, he spent more time arguing about picking up the socks instead of just picking up the socks. Uh, in other words, he didn't jump on things very quickly. Uh, and then the other one was a quantum physics major, uh, but didn't write well. So uh, that was the critique of him. He was able to fill both of those jobs easily. Um, he was working with a bunch of 50-plus-year-old, uh, grumpy old men. Um, and we figured he would come in with that millennial chip on the shoulder, but he didn't. Uh, he fit right in. He got the 80s references, probably thanks to you a little bit. Um, got the 80s music. Um, he was okay with talking politics and things that you probably shouldn't talk about in the office, which he's not going to be able to do when he goes to Booz Allen. So at least we thoroughly enjoyed having him. Uh, I don't know if you enjoyed it, but we thoroughly enjoyed having him. Um, and he was, like I was saying earlier, he's very good at marketing himself and marketing a product. Uh, so the, that, that citation that was read for his award, 100% accurate. From a key leader perspective, he was always the guy that we try to put in front of key leaders, the general officers, the colonels, to sell and market this product uh, called Madoff's. Um, and a couple things came to mind when I was, was thinking about things to say. Uh, Nick had recently, so if you're good at marketing, you're, you could also be called a storyteller. 
right? I mean, that's what he does. He's, he's a really good storyteller. And I, re I recalled as I was um, writing your, uh, uh, your reference letter for the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, a story that you told uh, from when you and Tanya were down in Knoxville. And I won't get into all the details, but there are people here uh, at the Friday morning meeting where Nick was telling this story, where they're at a restaurant, they look out the window, they see a one-armed bag lady squatting with a parasol. And it was just, I'll leave it at that. But you should ask him about that story. It was hilarious. The guys here in the back remember it. Uh, they're laughing, it was, that was a good time. Um, Really good, again, at telling stories. So he was also tasked with briefing the general and the whole command deck on this program called Megalos. Had the time, the location, he knew when to be there. He had the, the brief uh, prepared and ready to go. Uh, Mr. Folks and I are sitting at our desks and the next thing we know we hear the Colonel, Colonel Hancock coming. And he says, hey Major Perkins, you read your briefing made us today. Nick turns around and says, Yes, sir. The meeting started five minutes ago. So he gets up, stands up, and just takes, takes his uh, computer down with him. Brief goes off fine. It wasn't his fault, okay? It was our former boss, who likes to talk. An updated email had came out for him to, uh, you know, the meeting moved forward 30 minutes. Nick never got the word, but he wasn't flustered at all. We were laughing. It was kind of funny. Um, but you just got right up, went right down. Brief went off well, sold the product. Um, that's, that's another story that I, I like to tell. One of my favorites, though, is when uh, these Friday morning meetings, on Fridays, we wear a different, the Marines wear a different uniform. Um, they're normally wearing their camouflage uniform, but on Fridays, they wear either their Charlie or their Bravo uniform, which is the, the green, green pants, khaki shirt, the web belt that you can see Corporal has on. And the web belt, there's a belt buckle, and the tip of that belt should be between two to four inches past the edge of that buckle. Nick had arrived a little bit late. I don't know what it was. Probably had to walk the dogs, is my guess. Um, came in a little bit late. Had a brand new belt. So he was somewhat disheveled, getting himself ready. The meeting's taking place. And everyone knows Donald Trump likes to wear those really long ties. Nick's belt was all the way around to the belt. Okay? So that's not two to four inches, right? That's a little bit longer than two to four inches. And uh, Colonel Bardorf, who was the chief of staff, doesn't miss anything. And of course, he just happens to be walking by and Nick's sitting down. He's like, Perkins, what the hell is that? You know, so that was hilarious, by the way. And he just took it in stride, no big deal. Just explained why, uh, you know, he was a little bit late. Sorry about that, sir, uh, type thing. But that was uh, another really good story. Um, as we move forward into the evening, um, Nick will probably, I'm guessing, want to talk a little bit about uh, him and Cavill. So, I mean, if there's, he does follow him on Instagram, so that, that's something that uh, you're interested in. That's another little thing that we picked up. Um, but as I was thinking about how to wrap this up, uh, in all seriousness, I try to be, this is a, a momentous occasion for him. Uh, think about all the, all that he's been through um, and the sacrifices that he's made and his family has made. It was not easy. This, this past 20 years for our Marines in the Marine Corps was tough. Um, when the time that he was in, uh, you can see the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back deployments. I was actually working at the Marine Corps Recruiting Command. We grew the Marine Corps from 175,000 to 202,000 because as you saw, he deployed for six months, came home for six months. Deployed for six months, came home for six months. It was, and that's how it was for, for all those Marines during that time frame. It was hard, hard on everyone. And what I wanted to do is, uh, obviously, I'm not the right person to 
inspire anyone, but there are plenty of Marines who have come before us who are very inspirational. And one of those was General Raymond Davis, the building that we he's worked in for the past two and a half years. Um, by the way, General Davis, as Lieutenant Colonel, was also in first time second All right. So General Davis, uh, Congressional Medal of Honor a winner for his heroics in Korea as the commanding officer for 1-7, also served World War II, and then he was in Vietnam as well. Um, any awards you can think of, he had. He was awarded. So I pulled my hamstring this past weekend, racing my nephew's 12-year-old uh, son. So when you're 52, don't get in a uh, foot race with uh, people who are 40 years younger than you. And what is interesting about that is I believe that everything happens for a reason. I normally take the stairs every morning, but because I couldn't take the stairs, I had to stand by the elevator. And right there by the elevators is where they had this nice mural, uh, glass mural, EGA, and a quote from General Davis, along with all of his awards and, and, and commendations. And that quote, as I'm standing there waiting for the elevator, because Mr. Folks took it uh, before I did, it takes forever for the elevator to come back down. I look and I'm like, yeah, I've read that before, but something about it really stood out. So I'm gonna read it. And I think that um, it, it's, a, it's a testament to your, your service here in the report. And his quote was, so this was when he was commanding general for 3rd Marine Division, it's 1969 in Vietnam, so he's talking to um, Vietnam. In your sacrifice of comfort and safety, you have found glory. You also have discovered the fuller meaning of manhood and camaraderie among men at arms. That right there says it. I like that. And I think that's good. Congratulations on your retirement. The floor is yours. So that, that's a pretty hard act to follow. You're, you're going to have to bear with me. I've got some notes, right? Uh, and I'll tell you the first one right up top. No F-bombs. So here we go. I'm going to give it a good shot. <laughs> I'm going to give it a good shot. Hey, uh, you know, I don't, I don't view this as a time for me to talk about myself. Nate did a, a fantastic job of describing you know, my career. And I'm, I'm grateful for it. I really... Uh, and thankful. This, for me, today is about thanks. Thanks, really, everyone in this audience and many others that couldn't make it. And so that's where I want to keep my my words, my brief discussion headed. Uh, so to start with, I, I really want to thank the uh, the museum staff, uh, Corporal Wells. I think he was probably voluntold to be here today. Uh, but you, you got some beer and food waiting on your patties if you want to come. All right. So, and then obviously the staff has, has really helped us out and, and made it uh, fantastic for, uh, for what we got going on here today. Uh, there are a couple of Marines uh, doing the pictures and the video. Uh, again, they were voluntold to be here and uh, I, super, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your Saturday uh, to be here and, and help me give thanks for, for my 20 years of service. Uh, so, thank you. I hope the pictures don't suck. You know, I'll, I'll come pick that stuff up soon, all right? <laughs> um, you know, if, if you had asked me 20 years ago, as I'm, as I'm being commissioned, hey, well, are you going to stick around? Are you going to do 20 years? Are you going to retire? Like, heck no. I, I was very focused on the immediate. Uh, part of me didn't expect to be alive, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, that sounds morbid, but understand, like, I'm 22 years old, 23 years old. We just don't think like that at that point. Uh, and now here I am today, and I look back, and it's, uh, it's dizzying. It's uh, just amazing. Uh, I had so many, so many life experiences. So many friends made, so many uh, colleagues, and uh, I'm just very, very thankful that I had their support, support from family, support from friends, support from fellow Marines, uh, to get me where I am here, where I am today. 
and I, I guarantee most of them kept me out of trouble uh, and kept me from you know doing something terrible or having like massively hurt myself or or them. Probably more self self <laughs> self self. Uh, they're they're trying to keep themselves from getting hurt. Like hey, sir, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. Uh, but here I am today, and I appreciate that. And I, I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for you all. So, uh, you know, I, I do want to do want to thank you, uh, people in the world. I, I will start with uh, my family, uh, mom, dad, my aunts and uncles, Aunt Leslie and Bonnie, Uncle Phil, and my sister Maggie. Uh, thank you for setting me on the path that has led me here today. Uh, I never wanted for any opportunity. It wasn't that I got everything I wanted, but I didn't want for an opportunity to make the best out of my life. And I truly thank you and for the steadfast support over the years. Thank you, I love you, and I'm very happy with you. It's awesome. Okay, moving forward a little bit in time. Uh, I have uh, a couple of, uh, couple of uh, really friends from the Naval Academy in the, in the audience. Uh, Adam Miller and Kyle Moore. Uh, we kind of ran around together. We were, we were, we were, the, we were part of the, uh, the, the first company crew back then at the, uh, at the Academy. And it, uh, it means a lot that y'all were able to make it. And it means a lot that you kept me from, you know, doing terrible things in Acapulco or uh, Whistler. <laughs> when we were just really young and dumb. Um, and you made sure that, uh, that, you know, you kept me grounded. Adam's a great individual for keeping me grounded. Kyle's a great individual for inspiring me to do other things. I'm pretty sure I took up mountain, mountain biking uh, because of you and, and all kinds of other things. So it's, it's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. To the, to the friends I've made along the way. And I, I see there's, there's so many out here in the audience. Uh, Robert and Christina, Scott and Christina, uh, Mark back there. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm calling them out and if I, if I miss you, uh, it's nothing personal. But my career wouldn't have been what it is without these relationships and friends that I've made along the way. Most of them, you know, probably started as like, mm, I'm gonna watch this guy and see, see what he does that, that is just messed up or crazy or, uh, and then they, they realized that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really not that harmful and, and if you just point me in the right direction and, you know, lubricate me with booze, I'll be okay. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for being there for me and, you know, accepting, you know, my, my foibles, my faults and, and, and uh, thank you. The extended family that I've gained, and this is uh, really the phenomenal, uh, phenomenal thing that I, I count myself very lucky for. But obviously, when I when I married Tanya in 2010, I got a whole host of you know aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, cousins, and it is fantastic. And I have just felt nothing but love and acceptance from each and every one of you since becoming a part of your family. And so I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Mom B, Mikey, Lynette, thank you, Willie. And then you got Aunt Sheila and Peter and, and Tracy in the back there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I really love the fact that y'all were able to make it and, and are here to support me. Not missing out on certain extended family. Um, and that's the, the, the phenomenal uh, daughter and, and grandkids that I have inherited because I've been lucky enough to, uh, to, to be in this position. Ashley who gave the invitation, which the reason she gave the invitation is back in February 22nd of 2022, 2222, uh, she got married. And it was a great, it was a great thing. She came to me and she said, hey, I want you to be the officiant at my wedding. I was like, I don't know if I can do that. But I did some research and I found that I could, I could become an ordained minister 
online through the Universal Life Church for 85 bucks. <laughs> so, I didn't even have to pass any tests. So, you can call me Minister. <laughs> Minister Perkins, whatever, whatever you feel like. No, but uh, so I was ordained and, and I officiated Ashley's wedding and, and truly it was, it was one of the highlights of, of my life. <clears throat> thank you, uh, thank you for uh, returning the favor. And she, so because I did her wedding, I was like, all right, now, now it's your time to pay up. You get ordained and you give the invocation at my, at my retirement. And like a trooper, she, she knocked it out of the park. Killed it, killed it. And, and it, you know, it's Ashley, her husband, Adrian, uh, Anaya, the oldest granddaughter, who's 13 now, which is just boggles my mind. Uh, I remember when we brought her home from the, uh, from the hospital and she was, you know, about, about the size of this, uh, this microphone. Chanel, uh, who's in the back there, you're getting called out. And then Asim, who's the, uh, the most recent addition and loves monster trucks. So you see a kid playing with monster trucks, that, that's him. He's killing it back there. And then Adrian, thank you, brother. I appreciate everything that you do. Lastly, but certainly not least, my lovely wife, Tanya. We met 18 years ago, which I say that out loud, and I do the math, and I'm like, holy crap, that's a long time ago. <laughs> but it, 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 it's, it's a testament to, to you and your strength that you've made 18 years feel like a, a both feel like a, a drop in the bucket with many more to come. And then, you know, sometimes it feels super long. You know, that, that's just how marriage goes. <laughs> but I, I love you unconditionally. And I want to thank you so much for all the support, all the late nights, all the deployments. We joke, I have never been home for a move in my military career. We're always PCSing and I'm deployed somewhere. So she is the one that is organizing the household, packing things into boxes, supervising the movers, and then picking up and moving our family to a new location. Sometimes it's down the street, sometimes it's in a completely different state. Uh, but you've done that flawlessly, you've done that with such grace, and you make it look easy. I know it's not easy, but you make it look easy. And I cherish you for that. Thank you. I love you. Okay. So that's it. I'm trying to, trying to keep this relatively short and sweet, because I know everybody's got better stuff to do on a Saturday. And there's, uh, there's, there's you know, some beers waiting for us at Patty's Pub. Uh, I don't have any, any great quotes to leave you with. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is that I, I truly appreciate every single one of you uh, for being here. And if you, if you want to, uh, 5.30 down at Patty's Pub in Stafford, we got an open bar here, draft beer and wine and, and food. So please join us and we'll, uh, we'll continue. And I'll, I'll tell some stories with that bombs in it and a little bit more off-color things that I, uh, I, cannot, I cannot say in this hallowed temple to the Marine Corps. <laughs> so, okay, thank you.